morning, welcome back to X Amelia X, I hope you're well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top five books for talking about feelings with your little one. So for those of you who are new, hi, my name is Amelia, um, I have an 18 month old little boy and we absolutely love reading in this house, they are the first thing he tends to gravitate towards when he sees his toys and he just loves sitting there, flicking through the books, listening to stories as well and just getting really involved. So we've got a lot of books in our house and I like to buy stories books that just have a funny little story but I also like to buy books that talk about feelings and talk about general life stuff that can help teach him things as well as entertain him. Now at the moment because he's only 18 months old a lot of the nuances of these books are probably going over his head but we just wanted to set a good example and start talking about these things as early as we can however just because he doesn't understand them um, we do as adults and these are our top picks for books that we just think are really really lovely. First of all is my absolute favourite, The Worry Saurus. We actually bought this when I was pregnant and we read this to bump <laughs> every single night. It's beautiful. It's a story about um, a little dinosaur who gets very, very anxious and very, very worried about things. Basically, he packs himself off for a little picnic and along the way, a little lizard tells him that it's probably going to rain today. And because he wasn't prepared for the rain, he hasn't got his wellies, <laughs> he starts to get really, really anxious and really worried and thinking, oh my goodness, should I just turn back and, and not even go? Like, what happens if I get caught in the rain and it's all ruined? Um, and then he basically learns how to control his anxiety and talk about those feelings. And there's a lovely line in here from his mum that says, um, if it's not a happy ending, it hasn't ended yet. So he learns how to control his little worry butterfly inside that's just growing bigger and bigger and bigger and to try not to worry about things that haven't happened yet because they might not happen and it actually turns out that it's a lovely sunny day and he has a beautiful picnic. Um, but I just think this is just such a fantastic book. It really speaks to me as an anxious person um, and it's just such a lovely sweet little story so I just, I recommend this to everybody, absolutely everybody. So if you're gonna buy one book from this collection, buy this one. I will leave them all linked down below for you as well so you don't have to go hunting for them, just click the link and it will be right there for you. But the second book is actually from the same series. We have got all of these books. There's, there's a number of them in this series and they're all fantastic. In fact, we got the Chatty Saurus delivered yesterday. I haven't read it yet, but our second favorite is the Stompy Saurus and this one deals with feelings of frustration and anger. Um, so again, it's a little dinosaur who starts his day, um, but he's just having a really rubbish day to be honest. Like his little brother starts annoying him, he stubs his toe, then he gets breakfast that isn't his favorite breakfast and he gets really, really frustrated and he stamps and he shouts. Um, and then everybody obviously gets quite upset because he's done a lot of shouting and he feels really rubbish as well. So he talks to one of the other uh, dinosaurs, little Batasaur, <laughs> who teaches him to slow down, take a breath, and look at things from a different angle. You know, like if uh, his brother was only trying to play with him, if he hadn't chased his little brother, he wouldn't have stubbed his toe, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's really lovely and talks about how to control those feelings of, of frustration and those angries and how to learn to calm down and take a deep breath. So again, really, really love that one. And it's such a sweet story. All of this, all of this collection, um, like it's just such a colourful and lovely book and he loves sitting through and listening to it and I just feel like it's really, really lovely to read as well. Um, so yeah, that is my second fave. Oh Kevin, okay, so this book is a really lovely one about um, going out of your comfort zone and trying new things. So it follows the story of Kevin the koala who is very, very comfortable up in his tree. He's perfectly happy, he doesn't want to move because down there is really scary but up here he knows what's going on. Um, so he always says no to things, he doesn't want to go anywhere, doesn't want to try anything new until one day um, a little woodpecker comes and knocks down his tree. So he's forced to sort of try something new and step out of his comfort zone and it turns out that he has a really lovely time and makes lots of new friends um and yeah he feels good for saying yes i can instead of no i can't so yeah again absolutely love this book this is from the author of a book called the lion inside you might have heard of it we've got that one um it's actually not one of our favorites although my little one does love it when the lion goes ee! <laughs> um, I do like it, it's just not one of my favourites and I actually think Kevin is a little bit nicer so yeah if you've got a little one who is a little bit nervous about trying new things or getting involved at playgroup this is a really lovely story to read and again we've got a couple of, of the ones from this collection and 
the animation, not the animations, the drawings are so, so lovely. Um, and again, I feel like this one just flows and we like doing all the, all the voices, even though our Australian accents are probably a little bit sketchy. <laughs> Book number four is the Big Bright Feelings collection, in particular this one, Finn's Little Fibs. I really, really like this one. This one talks about um, the importance of telling the truth. Uh, I think this is a really lovely story. It's basically Finn, he goes to stay with his grandma for the weekend and he accidentally knocks a clock off the wall, I think it is. And yeah, he knocks the clock off the wall and it smashes and he blames his little sister instead and starts telling all these lies and then all these little bubbles pop up around him and they make him feel really really bad and they're just sort of like looming over him all the time because he's told all these lies and every time he tells a new one a new bubble pops up and he feels really heavy and he can't enjoy himself um, until he eventually comes clean and tells his grandmother it was him that broke the clock and all the bubbles pop and he feels a lot better and he learns not to tell lies. Now again this is a very advanced book but it's one of those things where he just loves listening to stories, he just loves listening to long stories so we thought we'd buy books that we would invest in for his future um, and that would you know obviously teach him things and he can grow with them and, and get more for them as he gets older so we've tried a couple from this series we've got perfectly norman and ravi's raw as well but they've got like a whole collection of different feelings so there's one called ruby's worry um uh something about being brave tilda tries again i think really like the ones that we've got so far and i'd highly recommend this one especially if your little one is uh, prone to a little fib or two this one's quite quite a good one for that and the last one is a little bit younger so this is a book uh, on feelings and it's actually a lift the flap book which I think is really cute now my little one loves anything with a flap <laughs> so this one is probably a little bit more um, designed for him at the moment even though it's still a little bit advanced but it basically talks through the different um, kids here it talks about their day and then you have to guess whether they might be feeling happy or whether they might be feeling sad or whether they are feeling frightened or whether they're feeling brave, depending on what they've been through throughout the day. I just think it's really great. The only thing I don't like about this book is, which one is it? One of the kids, Olivia. Okay, so they use disgusted or delighted, but they use disgusted in the context of food. So I tend to, I tend to skip this page, although unfortunately my little boy loves that one because he just goes yuck yuck <laughs> but yeah i don't like the fact that they've used food to be disgusted by uh, i feel like they could have done that uh, like dog poo when you shoe or something i don't know um, but yeah that's the only thing i will say about this book and then at the end there is a little quiz to help them remember what they've learned like can you remember who was happy or um who liked the roller coaster and then it's there like Mohammed, like the roller coaster. It's like a little remembering game. So I feel like this is a really, really good book and, the, and you can get lots from it. So yeah, that one's a big one for me. I like that one too. So that is my top five, but I wanted to talk to you about the little Love Every books. Now, Love Every is a play, it's like a toy subscription thing. So every couple of months you get a big box full of gorgeous wooden Montessori toys. Um, and they often come with books after a certain age. So we've got the books that come along with that and these are an absolute favourite for him. I absolutely love them because they all talk about different scenarios in life. So we've got B gets a checkup, we've got um, bath time with Zoe or bedtime with Zoe and then Max and Nana go to the park. <laughs> <laughs> and like the different things inside them like for example it talks about what's going to happen when you go to the doctors and then she has a jab and she doesn't like that because it's quite painful but she gets over it and then she has a plaster and it's all good or like in the bath um having a great time taking off their clothes putting it in the basket running the water but then she gets water in her eyes and it makes her really sad and then same with Max when he goes to the park, like he's having a great time on the swings, but then he falls over and he hurts his knee. All things that happen in like toddlers lives that might make them feel a bit uncomfortable. And I feel like these books have a really great way of talking about them and showing them that it's okay to feel a little bit scared by stuff or sad by certain things. Now, the Love Every Boxes are obviously quite expensive. Um, I have got a discount code for them, which I'll leave down below if you'd like. But you can often find the books on their own, like secondhand on Vinted or something. So if you can find one, I'd highly recommend grabbing one um, because they're just fantastic. And they really seem to resonate with him. Like Max and Nana go to the park where Max falls over. Like he falls over and hurts his knee. And my little one is constantly walking around going, oh, Max. <laughs> like he'll, he'll just randomly just be playing with his toys and then go oh max sad <laughs> so it's obviously seeping in it's obviously going in 
and it gives you a really good opportunity to talk about those feelings as well so yeah if you can get those secondhand definitely do if you want to try out the love every boxes i highly recommend them i think they're fantastic they are expensive but if they're in your budget I'll leave a link down below. And that is it for our books on feelings for now. This can just be like part one of a million if you want to see more because we've got so many books and I'm always buying them. I just absolutely love them. So if you enjoyed it, please do let me know. Like leave me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, maybe share it with your other mum friends looking for other books with their little ones and let me know if you would like to see another one. But as always, thank you so much for watching um, and I will see you again soon, hopefully. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.